from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Merrily Joyce. This is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, it drives Nevada's and this nation's economy. How does our transportation system impact your economic well-being? My guest today to talk about that important issue are Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade and our special guest joining the congressman, Mr. Lee Gibson, the executive director of the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County. And thanks both of you for being here today. Thanks, Marilee. Thanks. I believe transportation infrastructure is one of the most important elements in creating a thriving job creating economy. Well, that's a quote from the congressman at the top of the transportation page of his website. And today on Eye on Washington, we'll learn why a strong transportation system is crucial to a state's economy. We'll learn why a neglected system threatens a whole lot more than just your commute. We'll tell you about the RTC's top project and what it means to Northern Nevada. And we'll find out how the congressman works with leaders like Mr. Gibson to keep the transportation system running strong. Are you in your car or on public transit right now listening to my show on one of our statewide radio stations, heading to work, school, the store, or the gym? If so, your trip joins 10.5 billion trips on America's roads each year, roads that need constant maintenance and rehabilitation to keep your commute safe and convenient. And it's crucial uh, not just to your commute, but to the state's very economy that that work is done. The National Transportation Research Group, TripNet, makes clear why an efficient, safe, and well-maintained transportation system is so vital to economic social stability of any state or region. In fact, you can almost juxtapose transportation strength with economic strength in so many areas. The strong system means access to employment, housing, health care, education, goods and services, recreation, entertainment, family and social activities, and it keeps businesses in business, giving them access to suppliers, markets, and employees. And conversely, Congressman, when you have reduced access due to, say, traffic congestion, lack of adequate capacity, deteriorated roads, et cetera, you see reduced economic productivity, don't you? And it's why you focus so often on transportation. Yeah, it's not a complex uh, thought. I mean, there's, uh, there's environmental impacts, there's uh, commercial impacts, you name it. It's just... Uh, one of the things that I think every jurisdiction, whether it's state or local, strives for in terms of their quality of life, their economic development, all that stuff. Mr. Gibson, first of all, welcome back to Ion Washington. It's you know, the, the Nevada economy, it's largely based on tourism, natural resource excavation, manufacturing, uh, agriculture. Given those examples, um, how does the Nevada transportation system play a vital role in Nevada's economy and growth and the quality of life? Well, I think in Washoe County, it has been absolutely critical to the restructuring of the, of the economy that we've achieved. We are now a center for manufacturing, logistics, and freight distribution. But for the access and mobility that I-80, 395, and 580 affords us, we wouldn't have been able to do and create those new jobs and diversify our economy. Sure. So it's absolutely essential to us, what we're doing in the Reno Sparks area, Washoe County, to create more opportunity for our citizens to thrive, prosper, and grow, and 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 stay and, and raise their families. Congressman, we're going to look at some specific numbers in our next segment, but but for now, it, it's no secret that overdue maintenance and underinvestment means lowered economic productivity, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does. The ability to move in and around an area, population area, distribution area, all that stuff is critical to people's decision to A, locate in that area, and once they're there to ease and maximize the efficiency of their operations within that area. Mr. Gibson, I, I want to talk briefly about the administration's uh, plan to rebuild the nation's infrastructure. Um, you were recently uh, talking with KUNR in uh, February, and, and you told them that uh, the administration's pulling back of funding to make 80% come from the locals and states breaks a promise and that while the president says it's quote time for states to step up you said the reality is that the feds need to step up what did you mean by that and uh, were you referring to needed grants and grant programs 
Uh, I was referring to a number of things. Uh, first off, we in the local level have already stepped up. We uh, in Washoe County indexed our fuel uh, taxes back in 2009, 2008 uh, vote of the people, 2009 legislature and implemented in 2010. Uh, and that has provided us the purchasing power or sustained purchasing power to keep our regional roads <coughs> moving forward. Um, what we see or what I see locally is that we've pretty well made our commitment to funding our infrastructure. We want to see the federal government come in, especially on those components that relate to interstate commerce and bring mm -hmm. forward another uh, increment of investment so we can continue to make the improvements across all modes, across all technologies, okay. and to keep our community growing. Congressman, what are your pros and cons on the Trump infrastructure plan for Nevada? Well, th there's not a specific one yet, which is right. why we've been talking to as many people as we have to try to make that as comprehensive as possible. But what he said so far? Well, um, I think what he said is it's a work in progress, and so quite frankly, we're looking forward to moving from a work in progress to something specific that we can all like, dislike, amend, and move down the road, because there is an immediacy need. You know, uh, before we run out of time on this segment, I do want to say that speaking of the federal role in transportation, you serve on the powerful House Appropriations Committee, and many of our nation's infrastructure projects are, are funded through the uh, committee's Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development Appropriations Bill, which provides targeted and block grants uh, for a variety of infrastructure programs. Uh, where does that bill stand? Well, and, and that's, that's an accurate statement. The part that we've missed, though, is, is a big portion of the Nevada Department of Transportation's funding every season comes from the federal government. So it's not sure. like the federal government isn't playing. It's like, okay, now we need a next generation to do some additional capacity, catch up on maintenance, those sorts of things. And, and quite frankly, when you say, well, where does that stand? It's like, it, 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 it needs leadership from the White House because my experience for around here from seven years is if you wait for leadership to decide to do it, and I'm not picking on my leadership, I'm picking on the Senate's too, that could be a long wait. Okay. And I think you've said before you've been waiting on the Senate to do uh, several things. Of late. Did I say that before? <laughs> when we return, top transportation, modernization, and maintenance needs in Nevada, and what the congressman and Mr. Gibson are doing to meet them for you, and we'll have that right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, NV Energy, Jim Marsh Automotive and Body Shop, the Rogich Communications Group, and Renown Health. I have three tests next week. I'm gonna be studying all weekend. Oh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until six. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesars Palace, it's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesars Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. A family's presence in the hospital helps children heal faster and cope better. But children who need specialized medical care are often sent out of the Reno area for treatment. Costs can get unmanageable, and it can be difficult for families to accompany their sick child. The Travel for Treatment program, presented by Ronald McDonald House Charities Northern Nevada, gives parents travel assistance when a child's medical treatment is not available at a local hospital. Please contact us today for more information and to see how you can help. Donate online at rmhc-reno.org. 
And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our look at congressional and state efforts to strengthen and support your transportation and infrastructure system. My guests today are Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade and Mr. Lee Gibson, the Executive Director of the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County. Now, if you think that road project you passed by this morning is no big deal, you should think again. According to TripNet.org, an inadequate transportation system costs Nevada motorists $3.2 billion every year in additional vehicle operating costs, congestion-related delays, and traffic crashes. Huge population and economic growth in Nevada has resulted in increased demands on the state's major roads and highways. That means increased wear and tear on the transportation system. Vehicle miles traveled in Nevada increased by 48 percent from the year 2000 to 2015, 17.6 vehicle miles traveled in 2000 to 26.1 billion in 2015. That was the largest increase in the nation during that time. And by 2030, vehicle travel in Nevada is projected to increase by another 30 percent. That's news the Congressman and Mr. Gibson take into serious account. Recall from our last segment that there's a huge tie between transportation and the economy. A well-maintained system means reduced vehicle maintenance costs, reduced delays, reduced fuel consumption, improved uh, safety, reduced road and bridge maintenance costs, and reduced emissions. And again, Congressman, poorly, uh, uh, better maintained roads mean uh, uh, better news for Nevada, and yep. bad roads mean bad news for the economy, don't they? Correct. Correct. <laughs> and I think think that's enough said on that. Mr. Gibson, Nevada has seen more than a 45% increase in the number of residents since the year 2000. You've been on this show many times, and we always emphasize planning. How do you, at the RTC Washoe, plan ahead and take uh, the, the region's growth into mind as you do so? Well, we go through a number of steps, including, uh, you know, taking a crack at forecasting. Of course, that's always a... a uh, exercise in making sure you're very careful about what you see in the future. But I think most importantly, we try to go out and talk to the public. We try to engage stakeholders, citizens, users of the system, and get an appreciation of what they want to see, what they see in the future, and how they would like us to deal with it. Can you look at the road conditions today and try to project wear and tear tomorrow oh, based, absolutely. On, absolutely. based on yesterday. Absolutely. That's a pretty actually simple exercise to figure out what the future volumes will be and just what it will do. But to it the helps you to keep those roads healthy. Actually, and it does. And what we do is we try to get ahead of that by making sure on regional roads that uh, we get out and do pavement treatments to help minimize the wear and tear. The last thing we want to do is reconstruct a road. So each summer we go out and each fall we go out and uh, engage in a very robust effort to preserve pavements. Isn't a good example of this the Spaghetti Bowl? Uh, it constructed in 1969 for a population of about 130,000, right? And now we got 420,000, uh, and, and growth isn't expected to slow down any anytime soon. So your future planning here means that working with uh, NDOT, the Federal Highway Association, to accommodate future travel, correct? Absolutely. We see uh, that system to system interchange being uh, the key linchpin for 500,000 people because it serves Story, Carson City, uh, uh, Lyon County, you know, we, it's a, uh, parts of California, it's a much bigger, it's the first system to system interchange as you enter <coughs> the whole California mega region that we're really at the tip of the spear of. So uh, that's a project. I will tell you, it's the number one priority for us, and given that it serves 500,000 people plus and all of the freight and logistic movements, and is the number one location for accidents in our region, we absolutely have that as our priority, and we're going to be moving forward in cooperation with NDOT to do all we can, as soon as we can, uh, to get you know, those improvements in place. In fact, NDOT's going so to start some improvements this summer. So that's the latest on that massive improvement project, yeah. correct? Correct. Uh, Congressman, you, you know, we need to emphasize the business part of all this. It, it's, it, it's not just about nice roads. I did see on uh, TripNet that companies look at the quality of a region's transportation system when they're even deciding whether to locate their companies there. Yep, that's all part of the, that goes into the mix. Schools, police, fire, commute times, um, costs for, you know, things like, li listen, if, if the road system's not good, everybody's insurance rates reflect that also in terms of the accident rates that go for the area and, 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 and for the uh, underwriting stuff. And so it's, it's, all, it's all connected there where it's, where it's a good solid investment in infrastructure that pays whether you're a casual driver 
or whether you're a commercial driver. And uh, still struggling to come out of the Great Recession, Nevada can't really afford to have uh, bad infrastructure, bad roads, and have companies locate to other other areas. Well, and, and actually, I mean, there, there are still challenges, and, and, and Lee's on top of them. I mean, Interstate 80 East and some of the connectivity stuff within the Truckee Meadows and by it, but, but quite frankly, when you talk about the region, the, the transportation um, uh, facts are, are actually near the top Good. of the list in terms of, of what's going on in the Truckee Meadows and the region. Excellent. And when we return, 50 years in the making, the Southeast Connector finally nearing its completion. Let's update this exciting and important project next, right after this. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. When you think RTC, what comes to mind? How about jobs? RTC road projects bring thousands of jobs to Washoe County, expanding and connecting Northern Nevada, growing our local economy, providing the more secure future for our residents and their families. So when you think jobs, think RTC. Your RTC, the RTC of Washoe County. We're not a miracle drug. We're not a technology. We're not doctors. Just the hope, which can often be the best cure of all. The Ronald McDonald House, a home away from home for seriously ill children and their families. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of top transportation news and what's happening on the Hill and in the state to get where you need to go safely and conveniently. We've been visiting with Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade and our special guest, Mr. Lee Gibson, the Executive Director of the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County. Well, speaking of safety and convenience, let's spend this segment on a project that encompasses both of those traits and happens to be nearest and dearest uh, project to our guest, Mr. Gibson. Northern Nevadans might find it hard to believe that the Southeast Connector, an effort that was first envisioned in the 1950s, is nearing its highly anticipated summer of 2018 opening. It's basically what the name implies. It's a connector between South Truckee Meadows and the city of Sparks, but it's anything but basic. Veterans Parkway, as it will be called, will stretch five and a half miles from the intersection of Gregg Street and Sparks Boulevard at the northern end to the existing intersection of Veterans Parkway South uh, and Meadows Parkway at the southern end. The road will be three lanes in each direction with new signalized intersections at Miraloma Drive and Pembroke Drive. Mr. Gibson, when we were preparing this show, I asked your wonderful communications director, Michael Marino, and he, uh, what topics were uh, most important to share with my audience, and he said South East Connector and the Southeast Connector and the Southeast Connector. Um, I, I was there, he said it was really important to you, and he, I was uh, there last June in Reno and I saw the progress up to them so I cannot imagine your excitement as we are nearing the summer and the 
big celebration. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, uh, big accomplishment for the community. Um, it is a very challenging project, brings a lot of environmental benefits to the area, a lot of drainage improvements, a lot of uh, resolution of just issues related to, to uh, mercury that have been in the area. We're very proud of it. It's going to be a great connection for people in South Reno to get to Sparks. It'll provide sure. some diversion and, and relief to, to a degree for, for I-580. So we're just going to be glad to get the project delivered and open and let people drive on it. And Congressman, it's important not only to northern Nevada, but the whole state in, in general, isn't it? Yeah. Anytime when you get to one of the two major uh, metropolitan areas, anything that's that's healthy for the metropolitan area, Lee was Lee was in southern Nevada before he came up here. It's like, it's just a quantum, uh, quantum measured benefit. You know, we've been stressing the, the link between a uh, healthy transportation uh, and a, a, a system and a healthy economy. And the, the, the Southeast Connector is not only going to connect Reno and Sparks, but it's going to, uh, those communities, but it'll connect people to jobs and, and businesses and recreation and more, correct? Yep. It'll, and as a matter of fact, it, it potentially can take some of, as Lee said, some of the pressure off the more traditional ways of getting to the east uh, gateway to the Truckee Meadows and what's going on east down Interstate 80 there. Mr. Gibson, your motto uh, for the project says it all. It says, uh, connecting communities, restoring the environment, creating prosperity. Tell us about that. Well, I'd like to say that we have an environmental project with a road in the middle of it. Um, we have a lot of features uh, that are really focused and committed to improving uh, and actually getting rid of some materials that aren't very nice. We want to get them into a safe area and have them uh, 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 clean up. It's basically the glycol from the airport, um, the duck poop from Virginia Lake, <laughs> and some of the oils and materials from the Costco that all drain through the Ori drain now and come into uh, a diffusion area. Right. And it just sits there and, and will help plants grow and will and restore the environment. And it just is a great asset and deals with something mm -hmm. we've been trying to deal with for a very, very long time. Yeah, you said uh, it enhances and improves the environmental ecosystem That's uh, right. in the, the, the Truckee Meadows. And it's just really great when you can design a whole set of improvements for your community that not only deal with mobility and safety, but deal with the environment. Uh, we in our business, believe it or not, think of ourselves as environmentalists. We want to do things that make the environment better, and the Southeast Connector is going to do that and we're very, very pleased with that. It was great to be out there actually during the floods last year when we could see our flood and drainage improvements that were associated yeah. with the road actually work with the governor present going, wow, that's great. So we're really proud of that feature of the of You know, the and I want to emphasize the, uh, the uh, we, since we've been talking about the importance to, of all transportation to the economy, as far as the Southeast Connector, you know, we should say, um, of course, we know there's coming jobs with the, the connections it'll make for the businesses, the people, employers, but we need to remember that what the project itself has meant to the community. Uh, I, I read that the project's generated $52 million in economic return from direct jobs, another $11 million indirectly. It's big news. Well, and, and that doesn't take into account what's going to happen property tax-wise when sure. people start investing along its length there. We should also emphasize, and, and you've said it here before, Mr. Gibson, that every dollar spent on infrastructure construction uh, produces about twice the initial spending, doesn't yep. it, ultimately? Yep. Good news we, all the way a, around. It pays, it, infrastructure investments pay back to the economy through jobs, greater tax revenues, Great. and a better quality of life. And when we return, a close federal-state partnership, how Congressman Amade works with leaders like Mr. Gibson to strengthen and improve your transportation system. That's just ahead. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill.
fishing tonight. We can meet up and study together. Just text me off, sir. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew she was special. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. And it's time for our closing segment of today's Eye on Washington. We've had as our guest today, Congressman, uh, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade, and our special guest, Mr. Lee Gibson, the RTC's Executive Director. Congressman, uh, you're always working with different leaders in Nevada, but I know that one of the most important things to you is keeping transportation and infrastructure strong, and so therefore you work a lot with people like Mr. Gibson. How do you guys work together to uh, get important legislation that Nevada needs? Done? Well, you've got a strong communication regimen, but, but when it's the largest jurisdiction, at, at least in, in, in my district, um, to have a strong leadership force that is responsive. It's like, hey, they've got a problem. We need information to help them. All those sorts of things where it's like, it's it's makes it, um, I, I don't want people to think I'm nuts, but it makes it pleasant when you're working with a real professional so we can direct our uh, efforts accordingly with my staff, with Kyle Thomas, who I think likes Lee better than I do. But anyhow, it's it, it's been a good relationship. Mr. Gibson, how do you how do you work with uh, people like the congressman? I know you're here a lot on the Hill working with our delegation members. Uh, my congressman, because he's my congressman, I live in his district, is essential to the success of the RTC. Uh, him and his staff, Kyle, are there to help us. They've helped us in numerous times. Uh, they helped us with the Southeast Connector. They've helped us with the Virginia Street Project. They're helping us with the Spaghetti Bowl Project. Uh, without their leadership, without their ability to navigate uh, the the channels here. We couldn't get it done. Thanks both of you for being here today. Thanks, Marilyn. That does wrap up this week's Eye on Washington. I hope you'll join us next week for another look at federal matters that matter most to you in Nevada. In the meantime, though, we're always here for you providing the federal news Nevadans need to know. You can just go to our website, JoyceCommunications.com. While you're there, check out all the federal issues that impact Nevada. You can like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Catch up with any shows you may have missed on the YouTube page of our site. Thanks for joining us on Ion Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Ion Washington with Marilee Joyce. Ion Washington with Marilee Joyce airs statewide in Nevada solely due to the generosity of our sponsors. Can your company help us continue our mission to remain Nevada's top source of federal news? If you can help us help Nevadans, please visit JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW sponsors and join us today. That's JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW sponsors. Sponsors.